Hi there, and welcome to Plant CEO. In today's episode, I'd like to welcome Geraldine Stark, the founder and CEO of Refarmed. Hi, Geraldine. How are you? Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm great. Thank you. And you? Uh, I'm very good, thank you. And you're in uh, sunny Spain in Valencia at the moment. Exactly. I'm from France initially, but I'm living in Spain, yeah. Yeah, great, great place to be in Valencia. A lot of the uh, yeah. homemakers. I'm not sure how, how is it at the moment in, in Valencia? Uh, weather-wise, you mean? Or? Uh, no, in terms of like uh, tourists um, and peop- you know, Spanish people going on holiday, they have their houses there. And- yeah, exactly. Lots of people have a second, secondary house where they go yeah. the weekends also and, and holidays. And we have a lot of tourists, obviously, um, on July and August. But now it's starting to calm down with you know, uh, kids going back to school and everything. But we still can enjoy the nice weather and the nice beaches. So that's, that's great. Cool. So um, can you tell me what uh, ReFarms actually does? Yeah, sure. Um, so we are trying to help uh, dairy farmers mainly get out of the dairy trade um, with providing them with a new business model um, and becoming plant-based milk producers and at the same time transform their farm into um, an animal sanctuary for the herd they already have so they can um, end up uh, their lives there in peace. Yeah, and um, wh- what would you say is the, m- the main reason that you decided to look at the dairy industry? Um, did you notice like the decline of dairy and the uptake of uh, in the recent years for plant-based milk? Was that the main reason, would you say? Yeah, so there's definitely uh, multiple um, yeah, aspects or reasons that got me into this. Um, and knowing about the dairy decline and the rise of plant-based milk definitely help me um, get into this direction of, you know, bec- um, transforming farms into plant-based milks. Um, initially, what I wanted is um, to find a new animal sanctuary model uh, that would be self-sustainable because um, until now, the, the models, you know, rely on donations and volunteers and use a lot of more resources, you know, to save these animals. Um, so I really wanted to find a new way to have um, well, a new animal sanctuary model that would be self-sustainable, that would not require to to allocate more resources, you know, with the land and, and all that. Um, and especially that would have a direct impact on animal exploitation because uh, we cannot just continue saving animals if they continue to breed, breed them by the billions every year um, so here um, yeah that's that's why um, two years ago I realized that um, farms could be the perfect place you know for an animal sanctuary because they already have the land they have the animals they have the people that were that know how to care for them on a daily basis um, and by switching one farm dairy farm to a, an animal sanctuary we have a direct impact on animal exploitation because this farm will stop bringing you um, new lives, new animal lives, you know, um, into this world for the meant for exploitation. So that's really what um, motivated me. And um, yeah, so so it's really from um, having this in my mind, and then uh, being aware over the last years, you know, about the decline of the dairy. Um, it was a lot of on the news. Um, we also hear in France, especially where I'm from. Um, even about, you know, lots of um, drama stories with uh, a lot of suicide, suicides, the rates of suicide, um, suicide is going really high um, because they really struggle so much um, with the work and the business. And, you know, it, for them, it's really more than just a business. It's a family tradition. Um, and to break apart from it is really, um, yeah, hard. Um, and they get so much pressure, peer pressure, but also from family. Um, and on the other side, they're not really supported by the dairy industry themselves. You know, they don't control the prices. They don't, they sell for less than production costs. Um, and it's a hard work, physical hard work. So, um, um, yeah, I was always part of, of, of those vegans who are compassionate towards everyone, not just animals, but humans as well. Um, so I was always sensitive to that. And, um, so this is really what helped me uh, shift this model and, and try to find uh, something that would work for all, all of this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's very sad to hear about the, the suicides. And I think there there's obviously a big mental effect also in, in the slaughterhouses and the repercussions that has on the workers as well and, and in their home life um, from the actual process of killing the animals. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, not not great for the for the independent um, dairy farmers. So I think what you're doing is great. And can you tell me, like, um, you, you also explored looking at um, crops 
uh, at, at some stage. And, and so tell me behind, you know, your thinking behind them going for a crop solution versus a, a dairy, you know, alternative plant meat milks uh, solution. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so when I started researching about, you know, helping farmers out, um, I wanted to look first what solution exists, obviously. Um, and what I found was there were two solutions. Either the farmer has to give up his farm and do something totally different. Um, but again, as you can imagine, it's pretty hard to just give up on your family um, house, farm and, and your tradition and, uh, and find something else to do when you have done that all your life, you know. Um, and the other solution, there are some organizations that are helping farmers to um, move to plant-based crops um, instead of um, uh, yeah, animal farming. Um, the issue with that is that it's a really complicated transition uh, it requires a lot of investment from the farmers on the farmer's side you know a lot of machinery and a lot of time because you cannot just uh, use the land that was used for animals to produce um, crops for human consumption there are lots of rules and regulations so it takes years before you're even able to plant and then you need to, to wait to harvest and then you need to find customers uh, so there was no really a model that really helped these farmers from from a to z basically um, so they it was scary for a lot of farmer, for all farmers to make this transition without knowing even if it would work. Um, and you also had the problem of what do you do with these animals, you know, when you move to plant-based crops. So some of them try to re uh, rehome them in sanctuaries, but our sanctuaries are all overloaded, you know, already with so many animals to save. Um, so in, in most cases, they just uh, send their animals to slaughter for the last time, basically. Um, so I really wanted to find a solution that would... Uh, be much easier, much quicker, um, with less investment from the farmer side, um, and also that would work with any farm because some farmers, you know, don't have a rubble land or the the farm is in the mountain; they cannot plant anything, so they would not be able even to switch to the solution. Um, so to really find a solution where the farmers basically cannot say no, you know, they they just say, oh, why not risk it? There, well, there's nothing to risk, you know. Um, so that that's why what we do is there is no investment on the farmer side. We provide them for free with the equipment, the training. The, the initial recipes, uh, we handle the logistics of, with the delivery, the pickup locations, um, and we even uh, handle the, you know, the selling and the sub subscription part <coughs> sorry, for um, their customers because all, um, all the produce, products they will sell go through our platform and uh, our customers can subscribe through our platform for a weekly delivery, um, in this case of, of oat milk for the first farm we we're working with. Um, so we really handle all of that so that the farmer can really um, concentrate on just, you know, doing the milk and uh, hand, uh, caring for the animals and the farm, which is already a lot of work. Um, so that's really why we came with the solution that could work with any type of farm, because we are not asking them um, to plant crops, at least not initially. Uh, initially, we are sourcing the ingredients from local uh, providers around them um, and for farmers who can and who want to they can then start you know planting crops and, and so that they can reduce their cost and even if they produce enough sell to our other farmers who cannot produce uh, so we'd like to have this kind of uh, of closed uh, network where farmer helps it, each other as well uh, but initially it's not required so the transition uh, can be very quick um, and they can start immediately getting some gains from that so they can, you know, secure already an income and then make the needed changes that require more time, time and investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, in terms of uh, just the, the stats that are out there in terms of the, the say, the UK and the U US uh, um, decline of, of cow, cow based products, for example, in, in dairy. I think I read some stats that um, by 2030 um, that there was going to uh, it was going to be it was falling by about 70 percent, uh, which is a huge increase and uh, sorry a, a huge decrease. Um, but also that they will be at that time most of them will be facing sort of bankruptcy. Um, so yeah, it'll be great to hear your thoughts on on that. Yeah, well. yeah, definitely. There are more and more reports now and stats coming out. Just you know, really showing that showing that that there's really a decline and also uh, to understand how the the the, the market m moves you just have to look at what big companies do and even big companies even like 100 percent dairy based company like i don't remember the names now but you had like this big dairy companies that are dairy companies since you know 200 years or something they all now switch to plant-based uh, milks or plant-based products or or you know in general big companies like you know uh, um, Danone or the, these big dairy companies they all now introduced a plant-based range you know at least so it really shows where the market is is, is shifting um, but the smaller ones the small farmers they are lost in this in this um, 
competition if you want because the other ones the big ones they have the finances to to know, make changes and everything but the small one they're not even necessarily aware of the market and they they just struggle so that's why it's always a smaller one that are you know uh, getting bankrupt and that's the ones we want to help um, because we prefer to work you know locally to have a local community with our farmers doing this the fresh products handmade themselves instead of just working with this big corporation that sell around the world um, and to come back to your question so in the UK alone uh, I took some notes <laughs> but in the UK alone yeah there was uh, like a 30 percent uh, rise in demand for plant-based milk only in the UK since 2015 so that's huge and at the same time there there were about there's a report saying there were about thousand farm dairy farms that had to close down again in the UK alone thousand farms um, it was between 2013 and 2016 so this really shows um, yeah clearly the decline of the dairy industry and at the same time the rise of the plant-based market yeah so can you tell me about your background um, and how you how your you know your career has paved the way for you to get where you are today yeah so yeah my background is a bit uh, funny I would say uh, but initially I'm from the hospitality industry so I studied management and business um, in the hospitality industry so I worked in hotels and restaurants um, more importantly, in my last positions were in grill houses, so really meat heavy um, places um, that helped my transition initially. But um, so, yeah, I became, I became a vegan myself um, for, uh, I'm vegan myself now for 10 years almost. Um, and so this shift came from watching some slaughterhouse footage and then especially uh, Gary Ruski's uh, speech. Uh, that really helped uh, my husband and I together. We made this this move 10 years ago. And I think that was great that we were together because we yeah. were living in France and there it was yeah. just impossible. Nobody knew about veganism. So the first yeah, that, year were hard. <laughs> that, that, that was the uh, the best speech you ever hear. Um, exactly. This on, one, yeah. On yeah. This was just amazing. And when we just watched this, it was clear for us. We will go this. And then, you know, the more once you made the decision, you start to read more, to look more and to research more. And then, you know, it just, um, confirms your choice and then you yeah you can never yeah. really go back um, so, 10 years ago by the way you, were you in uh, France at that point uh, yeah exactly and how, was how was it being vegan in France 10 years ago because uh, <laughs> impossible <laughs> pretty much you had, yeah you had no social life no friends nothing even no, <laughs> not, not even a family at this point because they you know they were just scared you would die from protein or b12 deficiency you know so um yeah no it was really hard that's why i'm so happy we did it together with my husband because i don't believe alone i would manage maybe vegetarian but yeah in france you know it's very heavy on cream and butter and milk everywhere and cheese um totally. and red meat and stuff like that so it, it was really hard we didn't know anybody else you know at wow. this point that was even vegetarian um yeah. and yeah fortunately this changed over the dramatically over the, the last years and then you know also with more we had more access on you know on internet on facebook and all the things to more to access more resources and to connect with more people and started to connecting more online with people you know that's a bit the new uh, like you have friends nowadays it's more online than anything uh, but then so uh, yeah then we there was more and more vegans we got to know more and more uh, people and then and now i mean i'm in valencia here it's it's a nice vegan hub for example uh, there there's a big uh, vegan community we have over 15 restaurants uh, only vegan restaurants um, yeah. so it really is nice um, and now you can see it in most cities now in, in France it's still not the best but if you go in big cities obviously it's, it's totally normal and common you have a lot of restaurants so it's, it's getting there slowly yeah, yeah. but yeah it was hard 10 years ago definitely and, and you also have uh, a dog there in, in Valencia with you who's uh, also vegan yeah, three actually. Three dogs. We, have three okay. dogs. <laughs> we always had three dogs, even back then, and that's also what helped the transition because at this point we were feeding them raw meat, you know, barf, the barf methodology. So we were uh, working in a heavy, meat heavy restaurant, you know, feeding it was big dogs. So it was one kilo of meat, raw meat per dog per day. Uh, we had the freezer full. We needed to go to butchers to, you know, to negotiate prices. And so it was just disgusting after a while because I was never a fa fan of meat myself, even yeah. though I'm not vegan. Yeah. Uh, so this drew, when when we then saw this, we we're like, okay, that's perfect for me. I don't want to have, yeah, to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, but we st still continued to feed the animals uh, initially, you know, meat, um, yeah. and then slowly we tr we learned a lot. We started cooking our own meals for them, uh, and then slowly moving that. And then we there started to be some uh, vegan kibbles on the market, so we right. started introducing that. Um, yeah, but now 
they're well not three of them are the same dogs but two of them are and they're over 13 years old now so they're wow. they're vegan for now seven years i think both of them and they're by the way it's a separate point but did you did you notice any sort of health changes within the dogs from from them changing their diet um yeah so it was more initially when i moved from uh, industrial kibbles to raw meat there was a big change in the in there initially obviously because you skip all the the, the nasty stuff in these kibbles where there's more mostly cereals and nothing else uh, but then also from moving to meat yeah to plant-based because um i read some report and from others experiences that you know it is too heavy in protein actually and that can also after a long term you know have a, uh, an impact so I, i'm not a vet i'm not a specialist here but um, i saw it myself um my, one of my dogs was overweight although she was fed only raw meat uh, the skin was not really nice and shiny she was losing a lot of hair she was you know ha had runny eyes um and this was kind of a um because it was too much uh, we were feeding only meat, you know, so it was too much. And when we started introducing more veggies and reducing the meat, we saw that she got in more a uh, balanced weight and uh, and better skin, yeah. And yeah, since then, my dogs have never really been um, sick or something. Uh, yeah, so and they're yeah, like I said, old. And one of our dogs is a is a is a is a is a big dog uh, breed that normally they only live until eight, maximum ten. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and now he's thirteen and still doing great. So. Um, except some, you know, old dogs, uh, troubles, like old dogs, but he's no main problem running yeah. around and playing right. like a puppy. So yeah, yeah, yeah very good. Um, so, so you started now, um, with oat milk. So can you tell me about your, your range, your product range that you're launching with? Yeah, so because we are only going to be working locally, so our farms are going to produce local milk and only sell to local customers. Um, for each farm, we do, uh, you know, some research uh, to find out what grows um, around there, what would be best to do the milk. And because of the two farms we are starting with, so one is based in the UK um, near Ashbourne and the other one is in Switzerland. Um, because of that, for us, the best initial choice was oat milk because um, you can find it locally and also there's a big demand for oat milk. People, demand, people yeah. really lo love that. Yeah. Um, so that's why we started with oat milk. So the first initial recipe, it's a plain oat milk. Uh, but then we want to come up with other um, types of uh, like milk, versions of milk, um, maybe introduce some fortified version because as we are organic for now, we cannot make fortified ones. So we'll maybe later on come up with a fortified uh, version that won't be organic, but that would be fortified, but also other types of uh, version, but also the types of milk, you know, with different ingredients. And later on, uh, we hope to uh, also be able to do other types of plant-based products, like like plant-based cheeses or creams or yogurts um, and all that. Yeah. So um, in the, I guess, you know, the uh, the ones that you buy at larger scale in the supermarkets, those, those oat milks uh, might include oil in there, different yeah. types of oils to give it a more rounded taste. Yours is fresh. Um, so how does it taste differently from the shop bought ones? And also if you're looking at like barista versions of that, if people are putting it in coffees and teas, yeah. how does that work with your version that yeah. you sell fresh? Yeah. So, so yeah, store-bought um, plant milk includes um, most of the time oils yeah, and sugar in some cases, uh, in most cases, and then also sometimes some additives and things like that. So we are trying to steer clear from all of that. And obviously the pr process is much more heavy because, yeah, you can just have your milk in the shelf for years there. So um, obviously it needs to have a much uh, heavier process. So we really try, we really try to have a simple process um, that is that doesn't transform too much the ingredients to to have fresh milk. So our milk only lasts ten days. Um, so people will get a, a weekly delivery every week um, so that they can, you know, just consume it in a week and have the new one. Um, and we don't add any oil, any, any sugar, any additives or anything. It's just oats, uh, water and some salt. That's it for the, for the basic um, nature version. Um, so you definitely taste it's fresh the taste is going to be different we we are not trying too much to to get to the taste of the store-bought uh, milks because we also don't want to go through these heavy processes uh but we are trying um, still to have something that obviously um, is nice it's still rounded without having these oils um and that most people yeah. like we we did some tasting in different places to try to adjust and we will be like our beta lunch is really our beta lunch so we are going to be 
receiving a lot of feedback at this point when we're going to be starting. That's why uh, the three months is fully 100% reimbursable for customers so they can just subscribe and get um, a, a month delivery taste it and if they don't like it or anything they could just get reimbursed um, but what we want more is that people taste it during this month and then give us the feedback and then we can make um, the changes accordingly but we are trying to have something that is uh, net neutral not too sweet because a lot of people wanted more neutral uh, tasting so that they can use it you know in coffee or things like that um, so there's very little separation in our milk and it doesn't curdle in coffee so you could use it in coffee and, and tea it, it works well like this um, we didn't work on this one as a barista version fully so we didn't really uh, try it yet in a cafes or restaurant but we are planning to because we have a lot of interest from cafes and restaurants so as soon as we start production so the, the production start in october we'll be sending uh, some samples uh, to restaurants and cafes so they can directly you know try with their steaming machines and everything to see how it behaves so i cannot give an answer on that yet but at least at you in your your home with your your cafe your coffee and your tea it, this works uh, works well so it doesn't yeah it doesn't curdle it mixes up well um and we it doesn't give too much of an added taste to there. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to, to make a produce obviously that people will like, but still keep those values and, you know, the freshness and not going yeah. over process and because it's also going to be handmade, you know, by the farmer. It's going to be, we're not transforming them into a factory. It's going to be a small production room going to be made directly by the farmers themselves. Um, so because for us, it's really important as well. Um, to go back a bit to this route of fresh quality products, local product, um, to be able to, you know, to show that plant-based food is not just about uh, lab-grown meat um, and industrial stuff, because we get a lot of uh, criticism for that. I think it's important to have those options, definitely, to reach more people, and um, yeah, but it's also important to show we, we can do it differently, and that yeah. we have different options, like we, we can have more healthy, um, fresh, plant-based foods, um, local, you know, like you would have before you, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I, I will support, I will still support my farmer because it's a fresh product. It's local. Uh, it's more healthy. You know, there's not, it's not grown in a lab and things like that. So it's important for us to show that we can also have a yeah. fresh, local, healthy products, but they're plant-based, you know, and local and made by farmers, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so that's what we're trying to do. And in the in the product in the process of you making it, you're are you adding enzymes as well that you've created to yourself? Uh, yeah. So um, so no. Yeah, that, that it's good that you point that out. Is that um, the the oatmeal you will buy um, in the supermarket? They use enzymes because oat is very heavy in starches. So if you just use it like that, if you try to do it at home, some people do it at home and like it, but obviously it's not the same result that you will get in in the shops um, because it has a lot of starches. So you will get with a very thick and starchy feel, um, and so you need to consume it very quickly because after a few days it just gets even thicker, and you cannot heat it up because if you heat it up, it just becomes a really heavy slur you know um so they use enzymes to break down the starches into simple sugars so we wanted to do the same without uh, needing to go you know to buying enzymes from labs or chemical enzymes basically um to find a more natural way to activate the enzymes and and have this process and that's that's how that's how we do it we just use oat malt which is uh, f fermented if you want oats um, that break down the, the start their own enzymes from uh, the oats because they have their own enzymes. And then um, by uh, cooking that together with oat growths, we um, activate uh, the enzyme that will break down the starches and we get to this result uh, where we don't get a slimy, um, slimy milk if you want and where it's also a little, a little sweetness there um, because it will transform the, the starches into um, yeah, sugars. Yeah. And when you're thinking about the farms, you probably want to go to like, uh, not obviously not the factory farms because you're not at that scale yet, but you want to aim at for the, you know, smaller farms, small to medium farms. What, what range of um, herds of, of uh, cattle would you expect them to have would be like your target sort of farms that you will want to go for? Yeah, so definitely because we are asking our farmers to keep their animals, you know, to become a sanctuary, they need to be living in good conditions and have good conditions for um, and enough space for these animals. So that's why we're targeting small, medium scale uh, farms right now. And also because that's the ones that struggle the most um, because they cannot, you know, invest in a lot of machinery and make lots of changes. Um, so for now, the farmers that contact us have anywhere between 20 to 100 uh, cows, for example, uh, it really depends on the farm um, and if the, the farm is big enough and have enough land and they can keep all their animals, that's the best. And in some cases, if they have too many, because the problem with dairy farm is that 
um, their capacity um, is limited to the cows, the milking cows, but they impregnate them, you know, every year. So when we come and transition them, in most cases, all of the cows are already preg still pregnant, you know, or oh, some wow. of them. So even if they have enough capacity for these cows, like in a few months, they will be double the size or something. So it, it changes the capacity there. So in some cases, uh, they had to do some renovations or, you know, um, to be able to or change how they use the land because um, they will not be needed anymore to um, give uh, certain feeds to the animals, you know, um, they will yeah. only uh, feed the animals hay and grass. So the lands that we're using, for example, to make animal feed, they can use that instead either for uh, human uh, crops or, you know, for just more space yeah. for the animals to room. And in some cases, we have to find um, a home for, for these uh, animals if there are too many of them. But that's why we are trying really to work more with farmers who can keep all of their animals, so small to medium scale. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and um, when you're thinking about uh, the 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 farmers what what is the main sort of commercial model with them uh, that you have i mean you're supplying all the machinery all the ingredients how how does that compare to what it is today in terms of like their their own margins etc yeah we, so we really tried to um, have a different model where we kind of give back the power to to farmers if you want um, because nowadays they don't have a say on anything they don't even see the color of the milk you know the milk goes from the cow to the tank and then from the tank to the truck and they don't even know what the milk is is going to whom it will be sold um, what kind of products will be made and they don't decide of the prices so every month the the the, the companies come and say, okay, this month I am buying your milk at this price. So they don't have a say in anything. And the price is changing so much and is, is on the lower side since the last years. And uh, in some cases, they even, in most cases, I would not say, they sell for less than production costs. So you can imagine it's, it's just horrible, you know? Mm. Um, so what we really wanted to do is to cut out all middlemen in between the farmers and customers so that they can really earn much more from their, their work, you know, from their hard work. Um, that's why we are not selling through shops or through other companies or through to processors that are going to be transforming the, the, the milk into products or things that I really want to go the route of, you know, having again our farmers be the one making fresh products and, and you know, feeding the local community. Um, so we, we are selling directly to customers through our platform uh, so that we avoid all these costs and, and therefore um, the income they can get from that is, is much better. In fact, the quantity of milk they will do is much less than what they do with cows because obviously cows have been bred now to produce so, mu so much uh, milk that is yeah, just yeah. possible to do as much milk you know, with uh, plant-based. But the difference is that the price, the, 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 you know, the income they get from that is so little. And mm -hmm. like I said, even less for production costs that uh, we, can, um, we can get to this, uh, to, this, um, to this income, to the same income or, or more. That's where we're trying to get them more, obviously. Right. And, and especially uh, changing, making like a um, lot of effort on the farm to change the cost they have to reduce the cost. Like, like I said, like re removing the feed they're giving to the animal because this mm, is like 30% 30, 30 of the cost is just getting the, uh, you know, feed for the animals, but they, they can remove that because we don't have you know, a need to make the cow more productive or fatter or more milk. You know? So we yeah. can reduce a lot of costs there and also electricity and water usage you know, to, to have to milk the cows twice a day and machinery and all that. Um, so it's, it's a, a combination of both, you know, making a direct sales to customers so they can receive a maximum of the amount from that and also reducing the cost of farm has. Yeah. So by doing that, we're able to, to, yeah, to give them a model that works. We are obviously uh, fully still in the experimental phase we're just launching our beta so our model works on paper uh, but now we're going to really uh, test it out and and, yeah. and see if it works and make changes obviously if we yeah. need to so will will there be like a transition period or will it be like a hard cut from their like traditional dairy method um, or would there be a certain period where you you know they yeah. see start to scale up etc yeah so we work with a three-month trial period uh, okay. this is really again to give the farmer this, this security, the sense of security so that he doesn't feel, you know, he signed for something and then he, he doesn't work and he's screwed basically, if I can say that. <laughs> uh, and, but, um, so in some cases they just wanted to give up immediately and they, and they give up immediately uh, milking and everything. So they just jump in because especially when it's, you know, uh, for ethical reasons or they've been working on finding a solution since years. So they just want to get over with and just believe so much in this that they just jump in. Um, but we, we, yeah, we give them this opportunity 
uh, to have this three months period where they can see if it works for them. Um, and then after this three months, if they're happy, we go on with a long-term contract. You know, we, we put the farmers on the contract and we put animals on the legal protection at this point on. But even then, when we do that, um, the, the, the transition itself on the animals is a bit slower because you cannot just stop milking cows like this. It's a uh, not so slow process, but uh, over the course of a few months, they have to, to you know, we, we're working with some uh, veter veterinarians, some vegan veterinarians that are here to support our farmers um, and help them um, to know how to make this transition because obviously most ve ve veterinarian um, don't know about sanctuary animals, you know, they know how to care, well, how to care, how to uh, heal if they want or to, to look after, you know, um, um, yeah, animals from farms, but as soon as the animal has a bigger difficulty, it just sent to slaughter because the costs are too high, you know, um, to cover this cost instead of, you know, um, sending them to slaughter. So we're working with some vegan veterinarian here to also um, help the farmers uh, get the right advice on how to transition the cows away from milking. And also later on, as the herd will grow old, there will mm. be lots of new, you know, um, problems and, and health problems that um, most farmers and ve veterinarians don't know about because most cows don't live long. They only live until five or six years and then they're sold to slaughter. So when they're going to be 10 or 15, it's going to change a lot. So we, 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 are, we will be learning as well on the same process and we really want to give the support um, so that the animals have this support. First farm is in Ashbourne in, in the UK. Where, where will, uh, and then we'll come to the Switzerland, Switzerland one in a minute, but where would the pickup locations be? Um, and what, what, what sort of other? Uh, yeah, so, so, yeah so initially we're trying to make the radius kind of small, also because we are working on the logistic part ourselves. We didn't find any um yeah good company to help us with uh, logistics because it's it's a bit complicated what we're asking for it's kind of a big radius initially we wanted to do 150 kilometers so i think it's 100 miles um but because of that most companies don't do this kind of radius especially because they need to go back to the farm to drop the empty bottles because we're working with glass bottles um for the delivery and then the farmers um get the used bottles back and they can you know clean them and use them again um so we really needed this kind of model and we could not find it or really so expensive that doesn't really make sense you know to add more price for delivery than for the milk itself for for our customers so we decided to to work on our own um delivery platform or system so that's what we're doing but obviously because we are still um t testing everything we, we need to start slow so we reduced a bit the 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 radio so for now um we are delivering cities like um uh, manchester chesterfield uh, birmingham nottingham belper coventry uh we have also derby and this one i never know how to say it Le leicester 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 yeah <laughs> leicester, it's so hard <laughs> yeah. uh, ashbourne milton mowbray so kind yeah. of around um i think it's it's now 15 miles or something there's, sure that's, there's, there's some big cities in there though uh, yeah there's some big cities um okay. Good scale. Yeah. And, and in some, we only have one pickup location and in some, we have a few more. Uh, we're still working on that. But again, we ne really need to, to try it out to see how it yeah. works. And then we're going to be increasing that. And the pickup locations would be like, um, you know, maybe cafes or health food shops that you've been in touch with and you're looking for more pickup locations right exactly exactly so we're working with uh vegan or vegetarian restaurants or cafes or health shop bookshops um those are the kind of uh yeah. people we work uh, companies we're working with um yeah we're still looking for a few more especially in, the, in those cities yeah have at least you know two three options in each city so that you can um you know uh, fit to more people and we're also working on on on, on some other um, solution for delivery, like what we call the group delivery, where basically um, an individual uh, can uh, or a workplace can become a pickup location um, if they okay. manage to find, you know, like five other people in the same company, in the same workplace, or in your neighborhood, uh, then you can uh, become a, a pickup for these people. So it's not okay. a public uh, pickup location where anybody can come, but just the people you have selected in your workplace or home. So you, you will pro profit or benefit from a, like a home delivery if you want uh, but that would be split with five four other uh, four or five other people and yeah. that's something we're still working on as well but this will go, give more yeah choices because the problem we have um, is to get enough subscription for these farmers because it's very local obviously centered so uh, targeted so um, 
most of the feedback we get is that there is not enough pickups because um, they don't have a pickup near, near them so they yeah. cannot subscribe okay. and we don't do home deliveries for now so we're really working on that to also make this work uh, better but we we prefer to start a bit smaller just to make sure everything works well and then uh, hopefully introduce as well home deliveries um soon yeah and um in switzerland so the main, main farm is in kalnach it's a, it's a small city close to bern uh, so we are delivering like the cities of Bern, uh, Neuchâtel, Fribourg, uh, Zurich, uh, Basel, um, this around. And we have a second farm we're launching just one month after in November, which is based in uh, Luzerne. And then we're going to be more the east part of, of Switzerland there. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, uh, where, uh, what sort of price range would you be launching at for your, for your product? Uh, so per for... Liter, yeah, so it really depends on each farm and each location because we, okay. we really work with different products, uh, different ingredients and uh, different uh, cost of production. So, for example, for the UK, uh, the price we have now is at 280 uh, pounds per litre, but it includes the delivery to the pickup location. So initially it's 230 pounds if you just go for the raw milk because you can have this option to pick up at the farm and then you pay only 230 litres. But obviously we know it's, it's not a possibility for most people, but yeah, we wanted to offer this possibility as well. Yeah, sure. And um, so, so far, um, you've been completely self-funded with, with this project, which is quite amazing uh, that you've got it to this stage. Um, and you're planning to be self-funded to try and get the, the farms profitable uh, in a way and for, for you to sustain and then build more locations in a way. Uh, yeah. is, I mean, are you, are you at, at some point, will you seek investment? Um, so for now, the plan is not to. Um, that might change. I don't know how it's going to evolve in one year, two years or more. Um, if we now, because we, for example, on the farmer side, we're getting more and more demand that we not, cannot keep up with. So at some point, we will need to to, to quickly increase our, our team and our, our work, you know, we're doing and everything. So we might need to hire and to do lots of things that cost more um, in a, in a, a smaller time if I can say like this um, so that might be needed at some point but we're really tr trying to avoid um, because we define so many values um, at Refarm being it obviously the ethical reasons but also you know the, pro the fact that the products are fresh um, not added with anything that it's local um, that we are selling directly to customers only subscription based which gives a, a, a guarantee and a, um, and a security to the farmer uh, so many different things um, we're also trying to you know later on move to only um, sustainable um, deliveries, you know, with green, green deliveries, basically. Um, also trying to help the farmers on the long term to make changes on the farm to be more sustainable, a bit on the land, but also on the energy sources they use and all that. So we have a lot of different values and uh, we really want to keep them. And obviously when you take some investors on board or something, they have a say in what you're doing. And at, the, at least at this uh, this point of the, of the startup, I, I really don't want that so that doesn't influence how we work. We have, yeah, we have put a lot of challenges on us because we're trying to uh, work on different problems at the same time and, and you know, be uh, meeting our values in, in all these points. So it's not easy, but uh, I do believe it's important to keep all these values and to try to make it work. So for now, it's not the plan. Um, and the, how the model works is that uh, all the subscription for all our farmers will go through our platform and we take a percentage from that. So it's 15% that we take from that to pay for the equipment we are buying for the farmers to pay for our operational cost and everything. And so basically each farm is helping us help another farm because from the, yeah, the subscription they will get, we take a part to help uh, buy equipment for the next farm. So that's the model, how it works. So it, it should be uh, working self-sustainable if you want like this. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know how it could change or evolve. So we might need to reconsider that. But for now, that's the yeah, model we have. So um, for your October launch, you have um, already a number of subscribers that you've already got, but you've got a cap um, because it's, it's a smaller beta and the cap is exactly. how many subscribers are you after altogether? The, yeah, the so we, we, it's 100 subscription for the for the beta launch. So we already, um, we have a web app. So it's, it's not an app, it's just a website. Uh, you can access it from any browser where you can subscribe directly. So you can choose the farm, choose the pickups, and then choose your plan and subscribe. And 
and then you the production starts in October and from October on you can then receive your milk but you can already subscribe now we we opened the subscription already uh, since July um, so we are limiting it to 100 subscription for better land so that we really make sure everything works out so um and so then there might be adjustment in prices or in deliveries or in the quantity we can make depending on each farm so that we will change after a few months uh, but initially that's what we have so yeah people can already uh, subscribe if they if they can uh, have access to any of these pickup locations um, they can subscribe to that already now and support our farmers and therefore support us helping more farmers because we have so many farmers waiting uh, behind that we just make these first farmers work so that we yeah, can you've had a you've that. had a lot of interest i hear yeah yeah, yeah. and and more and more the last weeks um uh, so we really have a lot of people we have over 20 25 farmers waiting uh that, that want to be helped uh, but we really after these three farms so the second one is also in, uh, the third one sorry is also in switzerland uh we're really going to be waiting for them to work uh, yeah. financially that the model yeah. works the business model works before we continue with other farms so it's really crucial for us that these farms work yeah that we have the support uh there um, because it's great to do all that but if we don't have in the end the people buying the milk it's not going to work yeah totally yeah um, so that's yeah. really something we need a lot of support with and then also sharing the project obviously um so that others who can maybe have access can subscribe because we know it, a lot of people can subscribe because it's just not around them or available to them yeah, yeah. And um, other than Switzerland and UK, which country do you think you might go for next? Or do you have a plan for that? Um, yeah, so we have, a, it really depends on the demand we have. So we have a farmer we're working with in France. That would be probably the next one. We have some uh, farmers in Germany. We have other one in, in UK. Um, we have some in the US. We have some in Spain. We have in Colombia. We have in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, I think that's Austria um yeah that's about yeah. it for now i think yeah yeah that'll be awesome hopefully it'll, it'll bring this uh this network effect yeah um, but yeah the, the first one i really uh obviously we have a lot of farmers also waiting to see if it works before you know they they want to jump in obviously so it really is important that we we succeed in this beta launch yeah and um so and just finally like future future product plans do you think you could go to different areas other than sort of oat milk yeah, definitely. We want to to so move on other versions of oat milk, but then also other types of milk. So it could be depending on the location, uh, because the oat milk is just going to be for those you know who are located in a place where we can go oats. But if we work with Hawaii, for example, it's probably going to be macadamia nut milk or coconut milk. So it's really going to be different. But even um, in the same localities, for for example, in the UK, the, the farmers can uh, will be able to do other types of milk, like soy milk or hemp milk or some uh, nut milk as well so it really will depend also on what the farmer wants to do because we really want to give um the farmer as much freedom as he wants to come up with new recipes or to just you know limit uh to one types of milk if he wants and others you know will do lots of different types of milk and then move on to do other types of products like plant-based cheeses and yogurts uh, so we really help them by giving them the initial recipe and the process and then they can come up with new recipes try things and also make some you know give some samples to their customers to try new recipes and we also are always there to help them and test uh, on our side new new recipes uh, and come up with new with new things yeah but yeah, uh, yeah definitely we're going to be doing much more different types of milk and then other types of products as well yeah great so yeah what you're doing is uh, fantastic the mission is great um Thank you. Wish, Thank you. i wish you the best of luck for your for your launch in october uh hopefully i'll get to try some soon if you <laughs> down to, to london but yeah that'll be yeah just wish you all the best and, and congrats thank you thank you so much and yeah for giving me this opportunity to be able to to talk about it and to yeah hopefully reach more people and yeah help us make it work great and yeah best of luck and see you soon Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.